All right, so let's get, let's get started tonight. I want us to look uh, in uh, John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. It's in your notes there. And I want you to pay attention and read along with me uh, because I'm, I'm not going to repeat the story. Don't you hate it when a preacher reads a long story and then retells the story? You just read the story. So pay attention to the story. You already know the story probably anyway. And uh, so I don't have to repeat it, all right? So let's get started. Uh, John chapter eight, begin with verse number one. It says, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives. But early the next morning, he was back again at the temple. A crowd soon gathered and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and he said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and he said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. The title of the message tonight is Drop Your Rocks. Drop Your Rocks. I want to share with you five observations that I have made from this story. And the first observation that, that I have made from this story is this, and that is, that is those who should be for us are often against us. Would you agree? Yeah, those who should be for us are often against Against this. Verse number third says, verse number three says, the, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Has this ever happened to you? Those who should be for you, those who should be helping you, those who should have your best interest at heart are the very ones who are hurting you, hindering you, harming you. It was the religious leaders of the day that were against her. Here's what I think, and that is we should help guide people, not, not guilt them. In your notes, we should help guide people, not guilt them. Now, please do not hear what I am not saying. I'm not saying that we should ignore or condone or downplay sin. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we should not preach against sin. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not really talking about sin right now at all. I'm talking about the sinner, and there's a difference. See, we should hate the sin but love the sinner. So my first observation today, and that is those who should be for us are often against us. Have you ever experienced this? I have. It hurts, doesn't it? Second observation that I make from this story is this, and that is what should be kept secret is often made public. Notice what verse three and four says. It says they brought the woman and put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Wait, what? You tell the whole crowd about her sin? What should have been kept secret was made public. People love to talk, don't they? <laughs> not, not you, no, 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 I, people. <laughs> yeah, people love to talk, don't they? You know, and the juicier the story, the better, right? 
two people were talking and one said to the other one said, uh, let me tell you what I heard. <laughs> and they said, tell me. <laughs> and so they told him and they said, Woo, really, tell me some more. And so they, they told him more and they said, you've got to be kidding me, tell me some more. And so they told him some more. They, whoa, I can't believe it, tell me some more. And the guy said, wait a minute, I've already told you more than I know. Should sin be ignored? Should it be swept under the rug? Should it be disregarded? No, no, and no. But on the other hand, what should be kept secret should not be made public. When the prodigal son came home, and he came home looking a lot different than when he left home, right? Because when he left home, he was the pride of his daddy and, and he left home, man, with jewelry. He left home with a pocket full of money. He left home, man, looking like a king's kid. But when he came home, he had the weight of the world upon him. When he came home, he looked and smelled like the world. When the prodigal son came home, he came home looking like a sinner, but, but remember the story. After he repented, his father, his father said, 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 bring the best robe and put it around him. I don't want anybody to see my boy looking like he looks. He don't look like he ought to look, man. I don't want anybody to see my boy looking like him. So get the best robe in the house and put it around him. Cover him up. And bring the ring and put on his hand. It's the, it's the family ring, the, fam, the ring with the family insignia on it that, that, that lets everybody know that this is my son, this is my boy. The father was into restoring his son. His brother, his big brother on the other hand, wanted to shame him. He wanted to shame him. His father wanted to save him. What are we all about? Shaming or saving? Hear this tonight, what God has expunged should not be exposed. First Peter chapter four and verse number eight says, continue to show deep love for each other for love Covers, say love covers. For love covers a multitude of sins. May I say this tonight? Jealousy exposes, love expunges. Because of jealousy, the prodigal's older brother wanted to expose him. This son of yours who has squandered the inheritance on prostitutes has come home. But out of unconditional love for his son, the prodigal's father chose to expunge him and what he had done. What are we all about? What are we all about? Are we all about exposing or expunging? The third observation that I, I, I make from this story is this, and that is people love to use scripture to their advantage. Listen to verses four through six. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. But what do you say? Notice verse number six, it says they were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. These religious leaders were using scripture to their advantage. They were taking scripture out of context and twisting it just enough to make it say what they wanted it to say. Now, were people stoned under the law for adultery? Yes, but only in certain particular circumstances and this particular circumstance may or may not have applied. Deuteronomy chapter 22 will tell you a little about it. Here's what we need to understand. This wasn't really about this lady at all. It was about the Lord. 
Verse six again, they were trying to trap Jesus into saying something they could use against him. People love to use scripture to their advantage. It happens all the time. See, see, if you take scripture out of context, if you mix and match scripture randomly, if you twist it just a little bit, you can make scripture say whatever you want it to say or at least appear to say what you want it to say. The title of my message today is Drop Your Rocks. The rocks that these religious leaders had in their hands were literal rocks. Sometimes for us, we pick up a verse of scripture or two, often out of context, or at least out of balance with the totality of scripture, and we use them like stones and throw them at each other. I saw a lot of this on Facebook during the pandemic. I even had some of those scripture stones thrown at me. People love to use scripture to their advantage. But here's the problem. Observation number four. People who throw stones at others for their sin often ignore their own. See, when it comes to seeing the faults and the flaws in others, most of us have 20-20 vision. But we are totally blind when it comes to seeing our own. These religious leaders who came dragging this adulteress before Jesus, no doubt they came with their heads held high and their self-righteous noses up in the air. They came with their hands filled with rocks ready to stone this sinful woman. She's guilty, they proclaimed. We have eyewitness accounts. It's a no-brainer. She should be stoned, they said, and we have the rocks and the right to do it. But what do you say, Jesus? Jesus. And what did Jesus say? Jesus finally said, okay, let's stone her. But here's how we're gonna do it. Verse seven, let the one who has no sin throw the first stone. And one by one by one, they began to drop their rocks because everyone in the crowd was guilty of some kind of sin. Romans 3 and 23 says that everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. What is God's glorious standard? It's a what. It's, excuse me, it's not a what, but a who. Jesus is God's glorious standard. Here's the problem. The problem is that we tend to compare ourselves with one another. I'm as good as him or I'm as good as her, we say, and maybe we are. But they are not God's standard. Jesus is God's glorious standard and he was perfect. Are there any perfect people in this room tonight? If you are perfect, would you please stand up? Hopefully you're not an adulteress or an adulterer. But have you ever lied? Have you ever been guilty of jealousy? Have you ever had to battle bitterness? Unforgiveness? How about hatred? Have you ever cheated? How about lust or greed or gossip? 
See, see, people who throw stones at others for their sins often ignore their own. I've had people come to me as a pastor before and tattle on somebody in the church, and I'm thinking, really? <laughs> really? You're telling on somebody for a three and you're a 12. <laughs> really? You've got to be kidding me. And here's something else. The faults we see in others can often be found in ourselves. Some time ago, I was being critical of something that was really annoying me in the life of one of my many pastor's friends, and it wasn't this pastor friend here. Other things about him ignore me. But, <laughs> Annoy me, but I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> it wasn't him, but there was. I was being critical of a pastor friend of mine. Something about him that would just grated on me and was just very annoying. And I was being critical, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. You know, don't you love the sweet little dove of the Holy Spirit? He don't always flutter. Sometimes he slaps you in the mouth. And that's what he did to me. It wasn't the sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove. It was the convictor. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you are guilty of the very same thing. The very same thing that you are that, that is annoying to you, the very same thing that you don't like in your friend, you are guilty of the very same thing. And I began to listen to myself. And sure enough, the very thing I was critical about of my friend, I was guilty of myself. The faults we see in others can often be found in ourselves. Who knows? Perhaps there were people in the crowd that day who, who held rocks in their hands who were guilty of the very same sin this woman was. Only they had never been caught. And don't forget about what Jesus said about adultery. Jesus said that anyone who looks on a woman with lust in his heart is guilty of adultery. Hey, any man who would say he has never lusted would lie about other things too. Or they got bigger problems, if you know what I mean. People who throw stones at others for their sins often ignore their own. Jesus said it like this. He said in Luke chapter six and verse 41, Jesus said, you point out the toothpick in your brother's eye when you've got a boulder sticking out of your own eye. <laughs> Don't you love the sweet little Jesus? Wow, I'm going through this really fast. I've never had anybody complain when I preach short though. That's actually not true. Not too long ago, I had a man who was visiting. He had visited a couple of times, and he, uh, he came up to me after church. He said, I'm going to say something I've never said in my life. I, got, I thought, oh, go, okay, here it comes. What is it? What's, here it comes. He said, uh, man, I really like your preaching. Oh, okay. <laughs> I really like your preaching. I really like the way you put things together. I really like that, you know, how you do it but you don't preach long enough. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I can't say I've never had that now because I have had it one time, all right? All right. All right, let's look at the fifth and the final observation I have for you tonight. And that is only the Savior has the right to throw stones and he chooses not to. Out of all the people that were in the crowd that day, only one of them was worthy to stone her. 
Only one of them was totally perfect and righteous and holy and without sin. Jesus could have stoned her. He had the right. He could have carried out her punishment. But he chose not to. He chose grace and compassion and mercy instead. After Jesus said to the crowd, he who is sinless, let them cast the first stone. And after every single one of the crowd eventually dropped their rocks and walked away, Jesus asked this woman, where are your accusers? Isn't there anyone left to accuse you? And she replied, no, my Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Here's what the word says about Jesus. Jesus neither condemns nor condones. Jesus didn't condemn her as a sinner. Was she a sinner? Yes, she was a sinner, but Jesus didn't condemn her as a sinner, but he did not condone her sin either. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. John 3, 17 says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world through him might be saved. See, see, see we're not gonna win very many people to Jesus through condemnation. Heaven or hell, turn or burn. You're going to hell and I'm glad about it. I'm not gonna win very many people to Jesus through condemnation. First of all, who are we to condemn somebody else? See, see now hear this, this is good. The truth is, if we had been a part of the crowd that day, we too would have had to drop our rock. He who is without sin, he who is perfect, that leaves me out. How about you? The word of the Lord to all of us today is drop your rocks. Drop your rocks. Stop throwing stones. You have no right to throw stones at others. And this is kind of hard. But if you are throwing stones at others, that makes you self-righteous. That makes you a hypocrite. Romans 2 and 4 says, God's kindness leads you to repentance. Once again, let, let me say this. Please don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that God will not judge and punish sinners. I'm not saying that. He will. God will judge sin. He will judge sinners. He will on judgment day. But today is not judgment day. Judgment day is coming. It's coming for everybody. But today is not judgment day. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of grace. Today is the great, the day of mercy. Today, Jesus stands with, with outstretched arms and calls our world to salvation. The day of God's judgment and wrath is coming. Oh, listen, understand, it is coming. It's coming for the sinner, but it's also coming for the saint. Judgment is not just for the sinner, it's also for the saint. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. 
One of these days, we're going to have to stand as a, as a saint, as a Christian, as a child of God. That's going to heaven. But one day, we are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of everything we did and everything we did not do. And every motive behind what we did or did not do. And we're going to have to give an account. At that judgment, that's not going to determine whether we go to heaven or hell. The fact that we're at the judgment seat of Christ says we're a saint, we're going to heaven, but we're still going to be judged. And we are either going to be rewarded or the rewards are going to be taken away from us based upon that judgment. And then there's the great white throne judgment, and that's the one you do not want to be at. That's the judgment of sinners. And at the great white throne judgment, sinners will be judged and the book of life will be opened. And if their name is not written in the book of life, they will be placed in hell for all of eternity. I'm not saying that God won't judge sin. I'm not saying God won't judge the sinner. He will on judgment day, but it's not judgment day. Let's wait until judgment day. Let God do the judging and let's do the loving and let's do, let's, let, let's, let's do the forgiving and let's drop our rocks. The day of God's judgment and wrath is coming and it could be right around the corner. But today he extends his love. Today he extends his grace. Today he extends his mercy. Today he extends unmatched kindness. Are we going to embrace or reject his grace, his mercy, his kindness? And what are we giving out? Judgment or grace and mercy and love and acceptance and kindness? Not of their sin, but of the sinner. The good news is God has made a, a way for us to escape his coming judgment and punishment. He sent his son to take this for us. Have we embraced it? Have we embraced it? And what are we going to do with those rocks in our hands? Only the Savior has the right to throw stones. And he chooses not to. Drop your rocks. Drop your rocks. The takeaway for the message tonight is simply this. The rocks we throw at others will be thrown back at us. The Bible says, give and it shall be given. Good measure, press down, shaken together and run over. We like to use that for giving, but it's whatever. Whatever you get out, it's called the law of, of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You're going to reap what you sow, you're going to reap more than you sow. The rocks we throw at others are going to be thrown back at us. I know this is a Wednesday night crowd. I know it's the cream of the crop. But even in the cream of the crop, I've already said it there. We're messy. I'll never forget, I was pastoring another church, actually. I was pastoring right over here in the neighboring city, not long, far from here in Midland, Texas. And I had a man in my church, and any time I would preach anything very hard or very straight or whatever, he would tell me after church, you're preaching to the choir, preacher. You're preaching to the choir. What he didn't understand was I knew what was in that choir. I've had adultery in my choir before. I've had homosexuality in my choir before. I've had bitterness in my choir before. I've had unforgiveness in my choir before. You name it, and it's, in, it's been in the choir. I know this is Wednesday night. I know it's Wednesday night. I know it's the cream of the crop. I know it's the best of the best that show up on Wednesday night. But who knows what is in the heart of the people that are sitting in this room right now. The rocks we throw at others will be thrown right back at us. 
Let me ask you this tonight. Maybe you need the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. It's Wednesday night, preacher. It's not Sunday morning. I don't know who's in this. I don't know you. All I ever hear from this guy about you guys is they're sweet people. They're good people. Hobbs first the seventh. But I know as a pastor, we think we know, but we don't know. We think we know, but we don't know what's really going on in the hearts and the lives of everyone. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you're, you're in sin. You're in sin. This, this woman, was, she was in sin. She was guilty. There's no doubt about it. She was guilty. There were eyewitnesses. She was guilty. And they, taught, and they brought her to the right place. They brought her to Jesus. If you're a sinner tonight or you're in sin tonight, you're in the right place. You're in the house of the Lord. You're in the Lord's house. You're in the right place. He loves you. He died for you. Maybe you're here tonight and, and you need to drop your rocks. You need to drop your rocks. You have no right. If you would have been in the crowd, I don't care who you are, including me, if I'd have been in the crowd, if we'd have been in the crowd that day when Jesus said he was without sin among you, let him throw the first stone, I and you and all of us in this room, every single one of us would have had to drop our rock because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all, listen, without the grace of God, without the mercy of God, we don't have a chance, but thank God for his mercy and thank God for his grace. Maybe you're in this room tonight and and you need to hear this. It's time to drop your rock. You've been throwing rocks, throwing rocks, throwing rocks. And the truth of the matter is the thing, you, the very thing that you're throwing some, a rock at somebody for, you're guilty of yourself. Or you're guilty of something else. What difference does it make? Maybe you're here tonight and you need to drop your rock. You have no right to throw them. Maybe you're here tonight and you need healing from the bruises that you have received from the rocks of someone else. Maybe you're not the rock thrower tonight. Maybe you're the one that, that has had the rock thrown at you and you're wounded and you're bruised because of the rocks thrown at you. It's not coincidence that you're here tonight. The healer is in the house and the healer is not me. The healer is Jesus. And I believe today that Jesus wants to heal some bruises, some wounds, some hurts from rocks that have been thrown Maybe you're in this room tonight and you're of the group that you need to stop hanging out with some people who continually throw rocks at people. Like begets like. We become like the people we hang out with. Somebody said, take the five people that you spend the most time with, add them all up, take that total, divide by five, and that's you. That you will become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Who you spend time with. I remember several years, many years ago now, as a young preacher, as <laughs> you can tell, it was a long time ago, as a young preacher, long time ago. I started hanging out with a couple of preachers. 
I was a young preacher. I needed, I needed fellowship. I needed, I needed mentoring. I needed what other, what older pastors had for me. I started hanging out with a couple of pastors. I soon discovered I was hanging out with two, two of the wrong pastors. Because every time we got together, they talked about the district and the presbyter and other preachers and just critical, 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 critical. And I found myself being critical of the district and critical of the presbyter and critical of other preachers until I figured out, and I'm sure it was just the Holy Spirit that revealed to me you sound just like him and him. I wasn't rude, I wasn't ugly, but I just purposely began to stop hanging out with these guys because I didn't want to I didn't want to end up like them. And I started finding some people that were positive and some people that were that 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 was high on life and high on Jesus and high high on serving the Lord and 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 had a positive uh, good attitude. Started hanging out with them, and you could tell how it's turned out. <laughs> Maybe you're hanging out with the wrong people. I can tell you as a pastor. There have been times as a pastor, and I'm just going to make up names, but when Mary Lou started hanging out with Susie Q, I thought, oh, no. Because the spirit of Susie Q was going to get on, what did I call the other lady? <laughs> Mary Lou. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe you're one of those that just needs to stop hanging out with some people who continually throw rocks. Hey, I'm leaving tomorrow, so maybe, maybe you need to apologize to somebody you've been throwing rocks at. Where are we at in our lives? Hopefully you picked up a rock when you came in. Thank you for not throwing them at me. I gave you, I gave you two or three really good opportunities. But hopefully you picked up a rock when you came in tonight. My question to you tonight is, what will you do with your rock? What will you do with your rock? Are you going to throw it? Really? You're really going to throw it? He is without sin among you. Let him cast the first stone. Really? You're going to throw it? Really? <laughs> Not me. Oh, I've thrown rocks. Hey, I'm not sitting here. It's perfect. I'm, but no. No. What will you do with your rock? Hopefully. There's a bucket in the back of the auditorium. Hopefully. You'll drop your rock. I challenge you to drop your rock tonight. Literally drop it in the bucket. Drop it in the bucket, but as you drop it in the bucket, drop it in the bucket as a symbol of what you're doing in your heart. And tomorrow, when you are tempted to throw that rock, remember, no, no, I remember, I dropped it. I dropped it. I don't have a rock anymore. I dropped. I dropped the rock. Father, I just pray that you'll take this simple little message tonight. Lord, I sense in my heart, and Lord, this is for everybody. I, I, I believe one or two specifically. I don't know who they are. It's none of my business. 
But I, it's good for all of us. And all of us have probably been there at one point or another in our life. But God, I just pray today, Lord, that you'll help us. Help us drop our rocks. We have no right to, drop, to throw them. Oh, we might not be an adulterer. We may not be an adulteress, but, but all have sinned and, and, and fallen short of God's glorious standard. None of us are perfect. None of us are Jesus. Only Jesus has the right to throw a rock, and we're not Jesus. Help us today to be willing to drop our rocks. And Lord, I, I just sense tonight, I, I really do sense tonight that, that someone or more than one tonight that Lord has, has had rocks thrown at them for whatever, whatever reason that it might be. I, I can make a list of things that it could be and maybe I would hit it and maybe I wouldn't even be close to it, but all of us have been wounded. All of us have been hurt as stones, rocks have been hurled at us in our life from time to time. And all of us have wounds and all of us have hurts. And I, I just pray, Lord Jesus, you are a healing Jesus. You paid the price for our healing, but not just for our physical healing, but also our emotional healing as well. And Lord Jesus, I just pray tonight that you will extend your healing hand to those that are wounded and those that are bruised and those that are hurting tonight. And God, I pray, Lord, for those that, that have been hanging around with the rock throwers. God, I just pray, Lord, that you'll help them, Father, to understand and recognize that's not a good place for them to be. And maybe even someone that is here tonight that, that even needs to go to a step further to where that they need to apologize and make something right because they have been throwing rocks and they've wounded and they've hurt someone. Father, I just pray tonight, Lord, that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish what you intended for it to accomplish. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you guys for joining us for this week's service. If you ask Jesus to come into your heart or you rededicated your life, we want to know about it. So stay connected with us on our website. You'll see it below the screen. You'll go to connect. You'll go to prayer request. Whatever it is that you need, we want to stay connected with you. Fill out the connect card with all your information. We promise not to blow up your, your email with a junk mail or anything like that or call you or send you out mass texts. We just want to know your information in case you need us. Um, we are here for you. So we can't wait to see you guys next week. Please join us.